Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gavin, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, and we go from now until midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. About 25 minutes from right now, we will go to the Citizens Panel, but right now, uh, we're going to talk to an old friend out to the West Coast of the United States of America to San Frangima, California, and the lovely musical stylings of Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Lawrence. Great to hear from you on the most expensive city in the country. <laughs> <laughs> I must be very successful living in a very expensive city. Huh? Y- yeah, you are. Uh, 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 it, it is a very expensive city. How expensive yeah. is it? I mean, is it more expensive for you even though you have a rent-controlled apartment that you're paying, like, bupkis for? <laughs> well, that's, uh, yeah, that has actually saved me, so uh, I'm living under the radar, I guess. But yeah, but, I mean, everything else must be expensive, more expensive. Everything is expensive. Uh, I don't know what bridge, bridge tolls are, like, $7. I don't know what they are in New York. But... It, it, wow. Wow. So, uh, $7 on the bridge? Seven bucks for the Golden Gate Bridge, yes. And now that'll get you both ways, though, right? Yeah, they only charge one way. Yeah, I thought it had gone up even higher than that. I heard something like 12 or something like that. I think it's going to go up in the next five years up to like 10. We have a bridge here in New York, the, uh, um, uh, what is it? It's the, uh, the uh, Washington Bridge. Uh, and... Um, it is, I believe, going one way. I mean, you pay one way, you don't pay going the other. $15. Jesus. Yeah. Imagine if you're a commuter. That yeah. gets expensive over a month. It's all getting too expensive. You know You know what I hate? You don't deal with this, but I deal with it because uh, I'm a techie. Uh, I have certain accounts that I have that I use, like I have a thing called Video Blocks and another thing called Audio Blocks in which I get music that I can use, you know, without paying for it. Well, I'm paying for it anyway. And video clips that I use for a lot of the artwork on the site for animation and things like that, all right? Uh, When I first bought them, they were like, you know, 50 bucks each. Now it's up to 99 and they want to go up to 159 You know, it's like they sneak. Once you're in with them and you need them, they then keep upping the price rather than saying, ah, you've been with us a long time, so you get the same old price. That's the same business model of a drug dealer, isn't it? It, it really is. You're right. It is absolute. You, you nailed it. <laughs> Leave it to Larry Bubbles Brown. He's not even a drug user. I mean, the no. First really. one, the first one's cheap, <laughs> almost well, free. Well, I mean, it? like I have a, a, a Adobe uh, a suite that I pay forty nine ninety five a month for, so that I can, you know, like I'm recording this using Adobe Audition, and I do a lot of my video using Adobe Premiere, and I use Adobe Photoshop. So I use, do use their suite of programs, and. Uh, you know, it was forty nine ninety five. It's now gone up to sixty four ninety five, fifty four ninety five. So you know, and I know next year it'll go up to sixty. Yeah, they got you. So. You know, they've got you by the balls. Rather than saying, you know, you're a you're a trusted uh, person. You've been with us quite a while now. Just we're going to keep you the where you, where you are. You know, it's just new people. We're going to charge the new price too. But no. They just decide, hey, we charge everybody more five dollars a month than we got a million people. Think about how much more money, more money we're going to make a month, you know. Yeah. So, uh, it's uh, it's you know, th- and that's what they do with you. Uh, the one that I really loved, we I, we have a thing called Log Me In, which uh, my network uses because the people who do the shows have to place their programs on a computer and in a playlist so that it plays. 
right? Uh, I know you don't understand this completely, but it's basically they go online, they use the log me in, it shows them the desktop here on my uh, uh, server program, and they just do all the work they have to do every night to get the show uh, in there and get it to me. That started out at $99 a month. I think it was 99 a month. Maybe it was even less. And then the next year, it went up to 150 Wow. All right. That's fine. I guess that's the way of the world. Next year, it went up to 250 And this year, they said, if you want to renew, it's $350. I said, that's bogus. You know, yeah. I mean, I need the program, but I don't need it that much. So I went around shopping around for a program that would do exactly the same thing. And I found somebody who had a special deal going on their program for the first year. Six dollars and ninety five cents. <laughs> and when it wow. went, when the year is up, it'll be sixty nine ninety five. A little bit of a difference from three hundred and fifty dollars yeah, to do yeah. exactly the same thing that the old program was doing. So, you know, I mean, it's just these people, they get greedy, you know, they get a they get a, a, a client base. And then I called them up and I said, I'm gonna, you, you can't just, with log me in, you can't just tell them don't renew, you have to call them up and tell them not to renew, all right? So I called them up and they say, why aren't you gonna renew? I said, because I found another program for $6.95. And they oh, went, well, you know, we had to raise our prices because we were bought by another company. And I said, that's not my fucking problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the fact that they have to pay for the money they paid in order to buy you doesn't mean that I have to somehow subsidize that. So, Sometimes uh, trying to get out of a something is worse than breaking off a relationship. They, <laughs> won't, they won't let you uh, go. <laughs> oh, to join up, it's uh, just a matter of click here. Oh, yeah. what's your credit card? Da -ba -da -ba Thank you. Or PayPal. You just say PayPal. and That's really quick. And, and then it's, it's uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. and oh, congratulations and welcome to We're Going to Rip You Off for the Rest of Your Life Incorporated. And then when you want to leave, uh, call this number. Dump, dump, da 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 Dum, dum, da, 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 you know, just constant draining of, 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 of online music for about a mm -hmm. half hour that's disgusting, and they make it particularly disgusting because they don't want you to call them. And then finally somebody answers, and then you have to go through this gauntlet to quit the program, rather than just go online and say, I don't want it anymore. Now, some people do that, but in the case of Log Me In, no, uh-uh. We're, we're into heavy security. I remember years ago, I forgot what you had. You had something that you were being charged your credit card and you couldn't get, you eventually actually canceled the credit card. <laughs> you had to cancel the credit card, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I do stuff through PayPal because I do recurring stuff through PayPal, but if I don't want it recurring, I go to PayPal and just take it off the recurring list. Uh, and and that's that's good. Like I got this, this new remote login thing and they put me on a recurring uh, automatically. And so I went online and uh, to PayPal and said, drop this as a recurring payment. So that next year when it comes up, they're gonna have to get a hold of me and say, hey, you know, you need to renew. Uh, rather than me forget it and all of a sudden, you know, they've, they've suddenly decided to up their price to $3,000 and somehow I get a bill for it. That's, that's what LogMeIn was gonna do. They were just gonna renew it. Mm -hmm. and charge me the new $350. And then they said to me, well, listen, we got a deal for you. I said, oh, okay, now I'm waiting for it. You know, like, <laughs> the, like they'll really try and match my $6.95, you know. And if they said $100, I might have thought twice about it, you know. They said, well, Lord, uh, $250 for you. And I went, are you out of your fucking minds? How do you compete with $6.95? And I gotta tell you, the program I got works better and is more uh, uh, reliable than Log Me In was. So, well, you know. It's amazing, they try to <laughs> And they're still trying to go after you, even though it's $240 more. 
<laughs> and and everybody's like I, like with this audio blocks. They wrote me and they put a thing up and they said, uh, well, you know, we're raising it to one hundred and forty nine dollars, but if you renew right now, it'll be ninety nine dollars. So I had to do it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, because that ninety nine is what it's always been. So. Uh, you know, at least they were keep, keeping me at the old price if I wanted to stay at the old price. Um, but it's 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 crazy. It's just crazy. But you don't have to deal with this stuff. You no, know? not none being this, on dial-up. None of this is a problem to you. It, it, it isn't even the fact that you're dial-up. You just don't have all these programs and you don't do your... Do you, do, you can't do your banking online, can you? Oh, God, no. Hell no. See, that's why you need a fast pipe. Uh, I do need a fast pipe, although I was reading the, uh, and you probably know this, that uh, the Internet service in America is expensive, and most countries are much, much faster than we are. Uh, I think they are cheaper and faster, and sometimes in some areas, free. In yeah. other words, they have Wi-Fi. They have, like, the whole city has Wi-Fi. Uh, China's doing that. China is has a, has a thing where they're trying to get Wi-Fi spread out throughout whole cities in China, so that you can you just go online. That's it. You know. Well, it should be free since they make money off the user. Well, yes and no. I mean, there is a cost to to the provider. Uh, bandwidth does cost money, right? Uh, and so these programs that are like whole cities and things like that are being subsidized by the government. Uh, so the government subsidies are taking care of that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 you know, I mean, I realize there's a certain expense. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, it, the thing is that people, well, you see, you don't know this. You're not in this world. I don't know why I'm even talking I'm a to you. I don't know why I'm even talking to you about it. Anybody who's listened to us talk knows you don't know. Like, what I'm talking to you now is like Martian, okay? I'm kind of following it. But the thing is that, that uh, we've needed faster and faster uh, online service because the things that are being offered us are faster and faster. For instance, Netflix, something you are not aware of. Uh, Netflix costs, uh, is responsible rather for something like, I, I may be wrong about this, anywhere from 60 to 70 percent of the evening use of the internet. Okay? okay? Because video takes a huge amount of bandwidth and then they're, they're serving out 4K bandwidth and so you have to have like at least a, a 200 megabyte per second System. So all these systems are offering that now. It used to be, you know, it was dribbly, but it, it, it's all much faster speed being offered. And that's terrific. You know, that's wonderful. Uh, but the, the problem with it is uh, that it costs, uh, uh, is that that cost has to be passed on somewhere. But they, they are giving faster speeds because you have whole homes using the Internet at the same time. And if you've got a low um, sp bandwidth and uh, your, your wife's upstairs watching a Netflix movie and your kid's playing a video game and somebody else is listening to a podcast, before you know it, you've drained out a lot of your power. So, I, I mean, I have guys who call my show using Skype. And all of a sudden, their Skype goes back, and they say, "Oh, my kid's playing a video game." Uh, you, you know, so you need yeah. they, they need they need to offer that speed now. Otherwise, they're just not going to get customers. But it used to be like you know, here with standard, you get 200 megabytes per second. That doesn't mean much to you, but in the old days, for me to get that was you know almost impossible, almost impossible. Uh, like when I was doing that uh, that video show out of my out of my office in, in mm -hmm. San Francisco, uh, uh, we needed uh, we needed a thousand megabytes per second up, and we had to pay extra. I mean, that was a special line that was put in for expressly that purpose. 
but uh, it was it was you know and and I don't think if I'm thinking about it, it's not as fast as the one I have now. I have something like uh, uh, eight, a thousand, uh, almost a gig up and down now, and there it was like a, a thousand megabytes per second for I don't know we paid eight hundred dollars a month. Jeez. I know all really? of this. Wow. Not, I know all of this is boring, Larry, who still has to figure no, out. I remember that. I remember, and uh, you uh, had, was was that Comcast that put that in? Um, no, that was who was that? Maybe it was AT and T. I can't remember. You I know. do remember that you often had problems with it. Well, oh yeah, yeah, that too. Um, the same problem you had with women in those days. It, well, the opposite problem we had with women in those days. Uh, they wouldn't go down on you, and it did. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but anyway, I have, I have an iPhone sitting here with your name on it. With my <laughs> but, uh, you know, you still haven't checked, have you, to see about... Uh, I gotta, yeah, i got to see your old friend Larry Stoll. I, yeah, you say that every week that we talk. Yeah, I've been... I've been remiss. <laughs> what what is it in you that's resistant? I I hate change. You hate change. Mhm. Mm but if change is for the good, yeah, then it's then it's good. Although I find that all the changes in my life, 99% of them are horrible. So. Let me put it this way. The one thing that will get better is every time you go online, every time you're online all the time. If you can get with that concept, you're online all the time. So when you go on and use your computer to go somewhere online, you're not going to hear. I know, and I, I my sister when I go up to her place, she's got high speed, and it's, it is a very nice. It's very quick. Yeah. But, I mean, that's the way of the world. I, you, but you say, how many people still have dial-up in San Francisco? 50,000. 50, really? In a yeah, and they said that, and the city has been for 20 years saying they're going to get free Wi-Fi for everyone, and that's never going to happen. But they, they've been talking about that for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, but I don't understand, um, you know, uh, why there are 50,000 people still with dial-up in a city that is the hub of technological advances. Yeah, it's incredible. I think I read in maybe three million in the country still on dial-up. Really? Well, yeah. see, but some people are in areas where they don't get high speed. You know, the, they live on a mountaintop. You know, the, the you know the Unabomber, and they don't have dial-up, uh, and so uh, they don't have. Rather, they don't have um, uh, high speed. So the only thing they have is dial-up. Uh, and maybe they don't even have a phone line. I mean, how many people in this country still don't have phones? <laughs> the Unabomber. <laughs> all those guys, all those guys, Ruby Ridge, you know, those guys out there. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're leaving society. We're going to go, you know, live in a hut on a hill, and uh, we're going to make our own electricity by pumping a bicycle or something. I don't know. I just I I never I never was able to um, you know I mean I I understand why people are luddites. In fact, I envy you because every day, like I just before I called you, what did I say I had to do? I said I had to call you another five or ten minutes. I was mm -hmm. having a problem. And what my problem was, Echo no longer was recognizing my calendar. Why I have no idea. It just stopped. Uh, yeah, and that's that's one of my fears about changing. There's going to be some glitch, and yeah. Like, so uh, then I upset. then I then I was I spent 15 minutes trying to figure. Finally, I went online and said, "How do I make Echo read my calendar?" And it, it showed me what to go through, and I did it. Uh, and that's why it was so fast. But I mean, the fact that you know that all of a sudden, for no reason, it stopped recognizing my calendar. So I had to go through this whole process of solving it. Now, I can only imagine if you were presented with the same problem. I'd so, be clueless. So the fact that you were technologically retarded is maybe an advantage in this day and age. 
I wish I was. I am so, yeah, I'm wedded to it. The show I do every night, I got to go on the internet. I'm talking to you now, doing an interview. I, you know, that's a problem. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. Uh, and, and last night I had some problem with a program that wasn't working right and I had to reboot my computer and it still wasn't working right and then I had to look up ways to fix it and I'm going, you know, would I have spent this much time if I had a child with them in play, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. or being a father? No, I'd be on the computer trying to fix a problem. And the more stuff you got, I mean, I got, I got, you know, many, you know how many computers I have in this room? In this uh, room alone, the studio, I have four computers and they are serving one, two, three, four, five monitors. Jesus. Yeah. And in the other room, I have two monitors and two, and actually three computers. So, you know. You're, you're literally a TV station. Basically, I radiate from this apartment house. And the thing that costs me the most money during the summer is keeping the air conditioning going on in this room so all the equipment doesn't overheat. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's my biggest expense. That comes to $500 a month, for crying out loud, for the air conditioning. So. Jesus. Yeah. Now, do you have air conditioning? Uh, you don't need it here. Yeah, you really don't need it. In San Francisco, apartments were built, at least the early ones, with a lot of ventilation. And you just don't... Uh, yeah, it's always freezing here. <laughs> and it's always freezing. There. Well, I, I saw you were having some pretty hot days lately, right? It's been, a, for San Francisco, a fairly mild uh, summer, yeah. But it's today it's really cold. So. Uh, really, what's the temperature, do you know? It's, well, it feels like it's probably low 50s, and it's very overcast. Low 50s and it's overcast. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, I can tell you exactly what the temperature is in San Francisco. Uh, the temperature in San Francisco is, let me see here, it's 54 degrees. And it, you're going to go up uh, to a high of 60. Yes, a high of 60. Yeah, and, and if you get, uh, for every mile you get out of the city, it goes up a degree, so... It'll yeah. be 90 out in Concord. Friday, it, uh, Thursday, it's going to be 60, 64 on Friday. The hottest day you're going to get is uh, a week uh, is next Tuesday. It's going to be 71. Yeah, Boy, is it going to be broiling, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we used to, I used to have a, uh, you know, we had the studio. Uh, I didn't have an air conditioner in the windows because there was no way you could put an air conditioner in the windows because they were one of those windows that open out, you know. So there's yeah. no way to put an air conditioner in there. So we have, remember a swamp cooler? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the dehumidified. Uh -huh. And then all the humidity wound up in a bucket, and you had to take the bucket and empty it every couple of hours. <laughs> yeah, it was disgusting. <laughs> it was. And, and, of course, when you're walking with the bucket, it would always slosh. And so then you'd have to get the mop and clean that up. I mean, it was, it was, it, it was not fun. And that room got hot because I had all that equipment in there. Mm -hmm. So it was, I, I, I suffered for my art, folks. That you was suffered a, for years for your art. Now I just suffer. <laughs> you know. you know. I gave up my physical therapy, by the way. I was going to physical therapy for these numb feet. And mm -hmm. I found out these guys, these assholes, were trying to upsell me on everything. Like, well, maybe you should go see our chiropractor. Uh, maybe you should go see. We have an orthopedist here. He can give you a shot that will take care of that. Numbness in my feet, a shot will take care of it. What's it going to do? Numb my feet? You know? I mean, and they were trying to upsell me, so I got to hold my Everything doctor. Everything is the upsell. I hate that. I, I, I got to hold my doctor, and I said, uh, you know, these guys are doing this. He says, yeah, they're trying to sell you other services there. Go get another one. And so he's sending me a new prescription, and I'm going to somebody he recommended. But, you know, again, with the upsell, they're always trying to get more money out of you. Gee, yeah, and I'm on a fixed income. I'm an old person, and you're almost on a fixed income, right? It's really irritating that they this upsell thing. I don't know when they started that, but yeah. it's just... Uh, you're not ready for, for, uh, for uh, Social Security yet, are you? Oh, yeah, I took the early. Oh, oh you took the early. Oh, okay. So you early, get, yeah. that check's nice. And then do you get Medicare? No. I got the Medicare. 
You got the Started Medicare. that last year. Yeah. How, how old are you now? Uh, 65. Oh, okay. Good. Medicare is pretty cool, isn't it? It uh, certainly saved me money over, yeah, what I was paying God. Kaiser was 700 a month for a while. Yeah, you had another name for that. <laughs> Kaiser Doctor Assisted Suicide. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. It flies by. The Larry when you're Bubbles on the high speed internet. The Larry Bubbles Brown program uh, live from San Francisco is now over. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Uh, yeah. so, uh, wait, 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 hold on a second. Uh, uh, feedback and all that. Jeez, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do 80 million different things here at the same time, and uh, I, I can't uh, uh, manage to do them. Let me turn that on. Okay, hi everybody. I'm hardly ready to do this anymore. I just, you know, I was. <laughs> oh God. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Anyway, uh, listen, uh, we are uh, a program where people call in and they all talk, but not just one person, not just two people, not just three people. As many people as want to call, uh, we can put on at the same time, and then they all sit here and kind of talk with each other. Some of them argue, although I don't think we're going to have much argument tonight because uh, it's a fill-free night. So feel free to call. Um, that means... Uh, Phil, this guy that calls a lot, uh, uh, is not going to be on tonight, and he usually monopolizes a lot of the conversation. And some people are timid to call when he's on. And um, quite frankly, uh, I, uh, I I I can kind of understand why sometimes. But you know, if you've never called this program before, do it. Do it. Go over to gabnet.net. Over the right-hand side of the page, I'll tell you exactly how to do it. And once you get Skype, just go up to Add Contacts and uh, say, you know, go to Gabnet and then say Add Contacts and go uh, uh, Gabnet Live. And uh, uh, you'll be asked if you want to, you know, be made a contact. And I'll, you say yes, and I'll notice it here, and I'll make you a contact, and then you'll be able to call in. Is that too confusing? It really is. Just give me a call. We'll figure out some way to get you on. Uh, but here's the part of the program where I sit here and I wait for people to call. Usually Phil's the first one. Scott Boddicker is many times the first one. Uh, but uh, tonight, you know, I always keep threatening, you know, if we don't have anybody by a quarter of the hour, I'm just going to sign off. And I've never had to do that uh, because people do call, so... Mm. So I'm having my tea tonight. I really could use a cup of coffee. I find coffee isn't waking me up anymore. I guess I'm getting too old for coffee. It doesn't doesn't work well on me. But anyway, it is so warm in here tonight, even in spite of the fact that I have the air conditioning on, because it's just it it's it's just I I, I hate to complain because a lot of you people out there in the rest of the country are uh, are you know just boiling as well uh and uh we uh boy our air conditioner bill and we it, it, we don't we only use really one air conditioner well two this one in the in the studio which i keep on because i want to cool the equipment down because there's a lot of equipment in here that gets hot uh so hey anyway, oh tom yamaguchi is calling whenever tom Never hears come. hears that it's a fill free night uh we hear from tom yamaguchi hello thomas how are you you got it. Yeah, you got it. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. Yeah. Busy, Wednesday's usually my busiest day, so I get, I come home and I'm really tired, but uh, but uh, I got some more energy. So yeah, I I um I've been tired. I'm tired today, and I don't know why because I uh, uh, I didn't do much of anything. I didn't even work out today. I you know it, about the time I was going to go work out, all of a sudden a thunderstorm hit. Mm -hmm. And it was raining, like, you know, pissing up a storm, as they say. And uh, I, so I, I use that as a good excuse to not go down and pedal to nowhere on a bicycle, you know. So. <laughs> well, when I pedal a bicycle, I want to be, I want to go somewhere. Yeah, 
Absolutely. I'm not going to pedal a bicycle unless it takes me someplace. And, and that's probably been very good for your health over the years. Yes, yes. You know, I'm sure yes. you don't. You have not suffered any heart problems at your age. I well, I've actually started a cholesterol low, one of those statin drugs. Yeah, I actually started a statin drug, but otherwise, I am good health. Statin drugs are amazing. They're really amazing. You know, yeah. they they really work very nicely. But anyway, so I, uh, what was I going to say? I had something I wanted to talk about tonight. You know, I think about, well, I got something I, want, I need to talk about tonight, and then it, it comes time to talk about it, and I can't remember <laughs> what the fuck it was. Uh, you know. Uh, oh, I am going to be going back into radio. Oh. For one night. Oh, when? Uh, on the 26th of August. Okay. My friend, um, what's the name he uses? Walter Sterling. It's, uh, I know oh, him by another oh. name. Uh, he was. He was. He was staying with you. He was yeah. a house guest, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He has a a national program on Sunday nights on something like fifty stations or something like that, and he asked me to be a guest host on the twenty sixth. And I, I, in, my, in the beginning, I kind of told him I didn't want to. Uh, because I felt that, you know, enough time has passed that I just don't feel I have my chops up to do a radio program, you know? And he said, no, nah, he, you know, he passes by this office when I'm doing the show and he listens to it and he says, you're better than anything that's on radio right now, even now. So, uh, you know, I, I, that kind of flattery, I guess, will win me over. Mm -hmm. But I still, I still kind of, I don't know, I'm, I'm, he I'm still hesitant about it, but I told him I would do it. So. Yeah, please do it. I, I'd actually like to, to, to listen well, It's to on it. in San Francisco. Oh, oh, it's okay. I don't know what station, but it's on in San Francisco. I'll find out before the time. You know. Well, if it wasn't, I would listen online, because all these stations have... have you know, uh, internet streams. Now. Yeah, he's out of, uh, on a stream out of Chicago, I think out of a Chicago station, but I can't, uh -huh. I don't know which one. But anyway, so I will, uh, uh, you know, I will make everybody aware of when I'm going to do it and so on. But it's the first time I've actually done a radio program in five years. So. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Really amazing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I, it, it, it's kind of a little... There's something depressing about it too. I don't know what you know. I just I'm very apprehensive about doing it. Plus, you know, when you're doing somebody else's show, I told him, I said, when you do somebody else's show, your job is not to go in and do the Alex Bennett show, right? Mm -hmm. Your job is to go in and do his show. And he said, mm -hmm. don't do that. Just go in and do your show. Uh, but still, I'm probably not going to deal with politics because he doesn't, and that's just fine with me. You know, I'm so fucking bored of the whole mess. You know. So, so what kind of show does he do then? It's kind of lifestyle stuff, you know. Um, it, but he never gets into politics, really. He t he tries to veer away from that. He feels there's too much politics in talk radio, and I quite agree. You know. I mean, that's what I kept telling him at, at uh, Sirius XM. You know, well, I, I don't want to be serious all the time. You know. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, uh, you know, people actually in this day and age, they deserve a laugh and they deserve to feel good, you know, more than anything else. I've always looked at it. In our country, well, we define... Oh, wait a minute. You, you just, you must have touched your microphone and you were, you were getting muffled. I say, you know, we, we, we define politics too shallowly. You know, we have a shallow perception of politics. It's more of like... I'll tell you, you know, years ago, you had some guy, a guy who did a uh, cable access show called Lavender Lounge. Remember him? Vaguely, yeah. Well, basically what this show, and I didn't get it because I was on East Bay, but this was a San Francisco public access station, mm -hmm. okay, uh, program. And it was basically a gay dance, dance program. Mm-hmm. And so you would have this guy on, and he would talk about his gay dance program, and you promote it. And then one day he came on, and uh, 
he said, "Oh, we're, we changed our format. We're we're doing a we're we're, ta- we're doing a, a talk show now." And uh, and you asked why? He says, "Well, they they wanted me to do to, to be political." And then you said something really impressed me. He you said, "You know, two men dancing together, two women dancing together is a very political act. What could be more political yeah. than a dance show?" Yeah, it would probably still be my answer today to that question. Yeah, yeah. I, as I said, you know, so so so, everything you do, everything on your program is political. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, but you know, I mean, I, but I do think you can do a show that isn't political. You know, well, it isn't even. It, it isn't. It, it isn't even a matter of being partisan. I mean, you don't have to talk politics to have an entertaining radio program. You know, you can have a bunch of comics. I mean, my morning show wasn't a political show, but it was a talk show. And it was very political. Well. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean. That, that was only if, because. If we, uh, if we expand our definition of, of politics. Because I had a political bent. But my that show wasn't. I mean, basically, the the premise of it was a bunch of comedians get together and we sit and riff, riff for you know three hours until I get tired. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, it, 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 it today the trouble is today politics seems to be a spectator sport. You know, I mean, all these you know a station like MSNBC shouldn't consider itself a newscast. It should consider itself a, a, an entertainment program, because that's the way they are created. You know, they're, cre- they're created to give maximum amount of entertainment to people while they're on the air. Do you get what I'm saying? In other words, yeah, they, they think they're political and they think they're news people, but really they're just tap dancers, you know? And, and everything's going on in their mind is, what's our lead story going to be this hour? Well, this is the hot story of the hour. This will get them. Well, what is that more than saying, how do we entertain them? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Uh, and so it, it, politics, which is very important to all of us because it's, it, you know, we could live and die by the politics of the nation, has become a, uh, a spectator sport. You know? Well, it should be. It shouldn't be. I mean, yeah, of course, it shouldn't be. Especially right now, when our our, our democracy is un, under its greatest threat in, in my lifetime. Uh, I, I've never seen what's going on, and still people try to normalize it. They treat it as as, as a game. It's not a game. We're we're really, if if our democracy is to survive we really need to to get serious and 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 start doing something well people say to me oh it's terrible right now this isn't the country that i know and love and so on and then i started to think about it you know we haven't been that terrific (laughs) you know i mean if you think about our long history especially in my lifetime you know when i was when i was growing up in the 50s you had the the house on american activity subcommittee all that stuff, which was really just making a shambles out of what I believed America should be. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, we can go back before that. You had slavery. You had uh, you know, uh, women, uh, you know, basically thought of as bottle washers, you know. I mean, we've never, tell us a time in this country where we've been noble. And the only time I think we've ever been noble was during World War II. And maybe we weren't that noble. We had to be tricked into go, going into it. You know, uh, uh, Roosevelt had to allow uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, had to, oh, here comes Tim. Uh, Roosevelt had to allow uh, Pearl Harbor to get attacked so that he would have an excuse to go into not only to fight Japan, but to go over and fight Germany as well. Because Americans at that time were very much against getting involved in the war in Europe. Because they had just come out of a war anyway. Not one we had paid a great price in because we only entered what? We only entered World War I, what, in the last year or two? Right. Of it, you know, we weren't, we were, we were, we were there at the last minute, but Americans didn't want to go to another war. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Hi, Tim. 
America first. That's what I say. Well, no, I think America has always had its problems being decent. You know. Yeah. yeah was, was that Charles Lindbergh that led the the America First campaign? No. <laughs> yeah. Keep us out of the war. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've always had our challenges. Not to you know interrupt him, but we've always had our our challenges. But but you know. You know, we've always managed to, 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 so far, to survive them. And to me, you know, I, yeah, I grew up with McCarthyism. I grew up with with uh, Nixon. And right now what's happening is is, is, is getting really, really serious because, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. as I said, you know, we have, we have, well, basically we have someone who's basically telling us that we can't believe what our media is telling us. Don't believe what we're reading. Don't believe what we're seeing. Just believe him. And there are people that are doing that. And that's that's really, really, really bothering me. Well, uh, me, actually. I, 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 I'm, I have to, um, I mean, I agree with you about the press being assailed. But on the other hand, uh, I would always have been the first one to say I didn't think the press was that honest. I felt the, the press was always reporting, was always leaving facts out, that the news reporting was always from a certain perspective and mm-hmm. not from an open-minded perspective. You know, I mean, there are two ways to look at any event. And uh, I, so I don't know. I mean, the term fake news, I find that objectionable to me. What, what, you know. uh, what do you what do you think about the Sinclair? Uh, uh, is that going to? I think they're going to block that now. That's being looked at again. Well, that's, I mean, look, you know, expansion has been stopped temporarily. You know, anybody who sits around, boy, we're going to have nothing but people are calling by audio tonight. Here's Steve. Hello, Steve. How are you? Hey, yeah, how you doing? Yeah. Uh, the, the thing was, the thing is, when you get to the Sinclair deal. Uh, you know, people are assuming that owning TV stations and radio stations has with it any importance anymore. And to a younger audience in this country, uh, those local stations are being supplanted by the fact that, you know, where are young people getting all their information? Off the Internet. Where are they watching all their news? On the Internet. You know, which in some ways is almost as bad as Sinclair because a lot of that is being, you know, jimmied up by the Russians and so on and so forth. But it's easy to manipulate it, yeah. Yeah, but I, you know, I don't I, know. I really don't give a shit if Sinclair owns a, po- a shitload of TV stations. I think they're throwing good money after bad because those those properties aren't going to be worth shit in a couple of years. Well, what I take umbrage in is I'm from small Midwestern. Uh, the local news anchors were a vibrant part of the community, and still are in many places. Wait a minute, hold and on. they kind of coerced them and made them kind of dirty. Wait a minute, hold on a second. I want to put somebody on uh, a stop a call here and then bring them back. Uh, add the contacts. Let me call them. Let me see if we can get them. Uh, add, add them to this group here. Wait a minute. Add to contacts. Oh, well. Uh, there's a guy that called, called. Quick's Lan, I think, is the name. Add to group call. Here we go. Uh, we're uh, going to add him to the group call. Uh, Quake, Quake, Quake. Uh, uh, hello, are you there? Are you there? Hello? Yes. What's your name? How do you pronounce your name? It's Keenan, actually. It's Keenan. Okay, Keenan. Uh huh. And where are you calling First from? First time caller. Where are you calling? First time caller. I'm calling from Bangkok. From Bangkok, Thailand? Yeah, I'm here, over here visiting my in-laws. Oh, th- that's the furthest away I think we've ever had a call or call from. Do you have a... Do you have a wow, that's, do you, yeah, that's good. Do you have a camera available? I mean... The, so, um, so this you, is my first time using this, so I'm trying to figure out where my camera is. Yeah, if you see a little icon for a camera, turn it on, because we'd, we'd love to see the video from... from I only see oh. two phone icons at the top. Uh, two phone that's, icons... Oh, oh. He's looking at his screen. Yeah. I'm looking at my put iPad. Your, an iPad. Yeah. Oh, put your cursor tor- towards the bottom of the screen and see if there's some, some menu choices. Yeah, hit, the hit the bottom of the Is screen. Is it on the corner? Yeah, you might see a camera somewhere there. <laughs> Is that it? Let's wait, see. Wait, wait, wait. The thing that's what? a camera. 
Do you see a picture of like? What's up? No, go ahead. Do you see a picture of like a camera? No, Steve, be quiet. Yeah, I can't see. Can't seem to see it. Oh, okay. See. Well, at least we're hearing you from Thailand. Yeah. Oh wait, I think I see video here. Yeah. There you go. There. Bravo. Ladies and gentlemen, direct live and direct from Thailand, ladies and gentlemen. Now, how do, uh, it's it's uh, where? Well, by the way, it's, what what time? What is it like? Nine to ten in the morning? Or it's before like ten that? o'clock in the morning. That's what I thought. Yeah, like eleven hours from east. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's hot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. I'm sure it is. Where are where are, where are you right now? Are you in a in an apartment? I'm at a Novotel Hotel. Uh, oh, Novotel. Um, which is the main. Main downtown area. They even have Novotels in Thailand, right? They're like all over the world. Yeah. They even have one in Times Square. I'm pretty sure they do. <laughs> Thank God for Novotel, though, because when I was traveling through Europe, some nights, you know, I wouldn't, I'd just drive, and some nights I wouldn't have made an, a, a reservation at a hotel. And uh -huh. uh, there, all of a sudden you'd see a Novotel and you go, well, at least I know it's going to be clean. Yeah, yeah, it's a very nice hotel, actually. It's yeah. not that expensive. Yeah. It's only like $100 a night. Yeah. Yeah, they're reasonable. So. They're very reasonable. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so you have family in Thailand? Yeah, my in-laws. I just came back from their village in northeast of Thailand. And um, it's a totally different lifestyle there, but they're, they're rice farmers. I see. And is it kind of well, pr pr primitive? I mean, or, or is it, or we tend to think of those things as primitive, but I mean, is there electricity where they live and so on? And yeah, there's electricity, but it's, it's a hard lifestyle. I've, I've been there four times already, and each time it's getting harder to stay there a long time because I'm so used to, you know, living in the Bay Area. Yeah. You know, are you, now, you're originally from there, I guess, right? Yeah, I'm just here on holiday. I'm going to go back in about four or five days yeah. back to the Bay Area. Yeah, but you, were, so. you, were you born there? Yeah, born and raised in San Francisco. Oh, in San Francisco. Living, okay. Yeah, I'm living in Oakland now. So. Uh -huh. How is Thailand as a country, though, you know, at the present time? It's a, it's a great country. I think I'm going to plan to retire here because the cost of living is so cheap. But yeah. um, hey. the people, as soon as you get off the, as soon as you get out of the airport, there's a sense everyone just smiling at you and it's like a sense of happiness and when they see when they see foreigners yeah. you know get angry or anything they just look at them smile and walk away yeah is it, it so, how's the how's the political environment there um you can't say anything you know against the the royal the royal family but right. other than that it's it's okay yeah. It's fine. Well, so, I mean, it, just don't carry any drugs with you. That's for sure. <laughs> my question is: Would you would you want to say anything against the royal family? No, you definitely don't. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> now now even though I don't consider it drugs, now it, it just came out yesterday and this morning in the news in New York City. You know, you can just carry weed or smoke it. You can have it on you, and they can't bust you anymore. Where yeah. where's that? New York. In New York City. Well, we're talking about Thailand right now, Steve. <laughs> I know, but you mentioned you mentioned drugs, and I uh, thought I just thought I would mention because he said you can't carry drugs. So I thought you know. In Thailand. In, that up. in Thailand. Yeah, they'll yeah. put you in jail. We don't give a shit about New York City, and I live here, and I don't give a shit about New York City. Yeah, yeah. I've been smoking pot that, in this city an, for years. That, you know. Uh, it's just an item from today. So With a complete that's lack that's of getting funny. arrested. Hello, Steve. By, uh, Jeff, by the way. Jeff has joined us. Uh, yeah. is, there, is there any way you can like take your iPad and point it out the window so we could maybe see something? Other yeah, than... I can show you the pool area. Oh, Let me okay. See. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. can't see I can't see any video on my iPad, but I just see the still pictures. But here, I'll show you. I'll do it around. Uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Right. You know, right. I mean, that's not what I expect Thailand to look like. I expected, uh, I didn't, that, they got some nice buildings there and so on. It looks like a very real metropolitan area. Yeah, it, it really is. You know, if it I is. didn't know that was Thailand, I'd make, a, I'd come up with any number of different ideas of what that, what that was. How, 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 how hot is it there? It's pretty hot. I mean, of course, after you take a shower, you go out in the street. And you start sweating right away. Yeah. Usually, if I'm in an air conditioned, you know, uh, building, I'm good for maybe 15 minutes, and then I start sweating. Okay. So, but I mean, is oh, it Alex, I, 
Go ahead. Y yes, 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 Steve. I was going to say, if you call me back, I may be able to, a friend of mine showed me a couple of days ago how to use the camera and do a video. Well, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to go through that right now. No, okay, don't, yeah, don't worry. I, I just wanted to offer it yeah. for the future yeah. at least anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, it, 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 of course, you know, you're coming back to the United States, and uh, um, how, how, you sit, you're over there in Thailand, and what is their attitude about the United States at the present moment? Is there um, I don't hear too much about anything. Wait, hold yeah. on for one second. My daughter's... Thank you for that. <laughs> My stepdaughter just came and said, thank you for the swimming pool. <laughs> thank you. Oh, oh, you bought it just for her. Pardon? I can't hear too well. I said you bought it just for her, right? Yeah, I bought it just for there, there, her. There she is. There she is. <laughs> uh, wow. Oh. Wow. Uh, so, it, uh, so it's really nice. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, but they don't. I don't hear too much about the U.S. here. They yeah. don't, you know. I don't at all. I sometimes I read the um, read the the English uh, Thai English papers, but they don't. They only report the news, and that's about it. Yeah. Now, what do you do in San Francisco? I work for the state of California. I'm a workers' comp um, investigator. Oh, okay, good. So, yeah. And before that, I worked uh, worked for um, Medi-Cal before uh, yeah. Obamacare kicked in, and then I, they moved me to Social Security Disabilities. Yeah. Now, I, are you? Uh, uh, do you live in San Francisco proper? I live in Oakland. I actually live across yeah. from Lake uh, Lake Merritt area. Well, who can afford to live in San Francisco anymore? I know. I kind of lucky. I have a one bedroom condo, so uh, but it's kind of tight with four 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 people in there. That's what area? And it's it's fine. No, yeah. we're part of, of Oakland. What area? Um, Lake Merritt. What part of Lake Merritt? Um, you know where Fairyland is? Yes. Right across the street. Okay. Wow, we're Adams getting a lot point. of people joining Adams us. Adams Point, now. right? Yeah, Adams Point. Yep, you're correct. My daughter, my daughter lives at Adams Point. Oh, it's a great area. Just oh, don't go east or west. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it is. It yeah. is. And they're building a lot of uh, lot of condos there now. So. Yeah. One more person and we'll have a full house, but we have Tim and we have uh, Steve and we have Jeff and we have Kevin and we have Tom and we have uh, 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 Keenan and we have, uh -huh. and we've just been joined by Ray. How do you do? Yeah, Ray Keenan's in, uh, in, in Thailand. I know. You know, I wanted to say to him, I, 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 I did uh, Muay Thai kickboxing for like 15 years. I quit oh, wow. a, a year ago. And I have, some, I have one of my best friends is from Thailand. He's the nicest guy in the world. Man. The people, yeah, I love those people. I don't think you have the to. Thai I, people I, are so nice. I don't think they're you actually, so mellow and so nice to each other. Yeah, yeah. I don't it's, think you yeah, have. My to, wife is like really, just really calm person. Yeah, so Keenan, it's, you it's, probably it's, a, it's wonderful. You probably don't have to hold up the microphone to your mouth. I think it may okay. work just fine. Yeah, talk, oh, okay. talk to us now. I'm just afraid of the noise because I'm by air conditioner. Oh, you're you're fine. Yeah, yeah you're your fine. wife is from yeah. Thailand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. and she has Thailand. a great, fa nice family you, and everything. You know what's yeah, the family yeah. very, very, very humble. Very, you know, they're rice farmers. Yeah. So, and they're really family um, oriented. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Yeah. It kind of makes you appreciate what you have. I mean, considering yeah. they live on basically very little. Yeah. yeah. Are they happy though? That's that's the yeah. that's oh the, yeah they're that's like the most the important people thing. I've ever met. <laughs> they're so bad. like nothing bothers them. Yeah. I, I wish I wish that we could we could be that way here. I don't know. You know. I'm on the phone. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> hello. Let me wave at her. Let me wave at her. Uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking on the. Yeah. Uh, uh, what 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 compelled you, Keenan, to just call us tonight? You could have called us when you're in San Francisco and you're near a computer. I know. And then all of a sudden you decided, kind of, uh, kind of, you know, the first time you're jittery trying to call. And are you using? I'm embarrassed. So I figured. I might as well just call now. Are you using the hotel <laughs> Wi-Fi? Yeah, I'm actually using um, uh, my SIM card because the Wi-Fi. Here at the pool is kind of slow. I couldn't connect. Oh, I see. But that doesn't cost so. you a fortune with the SIM card. I mean, uh, the uh, uh, the, the SIM card I got um, about 
two weeks ago when I landed. Oh, it oh. wasn't very expensive. It was like fifteen dollars. Oh, the SIM $15. card, and so it's local service you're getting. Um, it's the yeah one of the, the cell oh. services. Oh, here. that's cool. That's cool. It's so cheap. That's one thing I like about it here. If you need to add, you know, add money to your SIM card, just go to Seven Eleven. Pay, you know. Here's here's what's amazing to me it. is you are in Thailand. And uh, I have we have somebody who calls us from um, uh, Dubai. Uh, and yeah, the thing I, I notice the is, <laughs> yeah, the picture is extraordinarily good. Oh, really? I mean, when I'm I was surprised. a little boy and I watched television, they had the first shot ever coast to coast using the coaxial <laughs> cable oh. in which on one part of the screen they had New York <clears throat> City. And on the other half of the screen, they had the Golden Gate Bridge. And it was in black and white, and everybody was, isn't this marvelous that we can do this now? And now look at us. You know, I know it's amazing. in my lifetime, I've gone from that to, oh, so you're in Thailand, huh? Look at him, folks. He's in Thailand. Happy Skyping, you know. Whatever. Uh, it's, it's more like a ham radio. Yeah, in its own weird way. Yeah, you're right. You are. Right, you are. Hello, Kevin. How are you? Okay. How y'all doing? Yeah. What? Maybe maybe you should uh, maybe put your uh, microphone up to your mouth a little bit there. Uh, yeah, it's Keen. a little weak, along with myself. I, th I think it's the background noise from the swimming pool. Yeah, Keenan. Yeah, just hold it closer to your mic. Should, should I just go ahead and mute it? Uh, mute it when you're not talking. Okay. Okay. And when you, you want to talk, right when you want to talk, just <laughs> mute it. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if you if you accidentally going to turn yourself off, then don't do it. But yeah. okay, I can see now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll just cover the mic. Yeah, that's that'd be the best way to do it. Uh, anyway, how you doing, Kevin? Good. How about yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Your health holding up and everything. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Got the old colon that asked to be scheduled for the end of the month. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. A CT scan scheduled. Oh wait, is the waiting room open yet? Yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> I got all kinds of stuff going on this month. Yeah, really? Son yep. of a bitch. Well, you know. But I, I've decided I'm not going to complain anymore since uh, I went to see my friend up in Oregon. So. Uh, it, why? Well, what's the problem with your friend up in Oregon? Oh, he he's uh he's the one that uh, uh he got diagnosed with ALS. Oh, really? I'm learning a lot about ALS. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I had a friend yeah. a couple of years ago than that. If you, yeah. if, you could yeah. mute, if you could mute yourself, Keenan, that really would help because it... it uh, okay, let me see if I can find the mute button here. Uh, I'm, I wish I had my iPad here. I'd show you what it was. but see your microphone. Huh? Should be close to Wherever you... Wherever you sh oh, I see it now. Hold on. Yeah, it's like a microphone. There you go. That's ah. fine. Then when you want to talk... Do it, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's better. Uh, uh, but, yeah. Yeah. I spent uh, eight days up in Oregon with him, and uh, it was a tough time. But really? Yeah. I mean, has he, has he progressed that far? Well, he's at the point where he's got to use a suction machine for oh uh, his belt. He's got, he, he can drive. He's got all his limbs working. He can do that, but he can't talk well. Um. He can't. He has to eat through a tube. Now uh, ALS is that Lou Gehrig's disease? Yeah. 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 Wow. Which uh, how it, how, it, how amazing tough. was that that a guy named Lou Gehrig got Lou Gehrig's disease? I think that, that was amazing. Quite yeah. what, what's the what are the chances of that? <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Sometimes. Uh, yeah. Sometimes. Uh, sometimes when you worry about your own health, uh, and you you hear about other people's health. Uh, you know, I feel like a, you know, I feel like a piker around here. I I just got this numb feet deal that I'm dealing with, and that's about it. You know, Jeff, yeah. look at him. He's a bionic man right there with his, right. with his, yeah, uh, with his heart thing and everything. You know. Yeah. Then makes uh, you think about your own stuff and you, you look moving. at what he's going through. You know. Yeah. What were you saying, Jeff? I still keep moving. You still keep moving. Don't you are yeah, no you, you you keep very active you know i'm trying i mean yeah, i mean you you came back from a stroke right you know i yes. mean you've had to learn how to speak again and do all that 
crap. Uh, that that is the yeah. the worst thing in the world. Yeah. But, uh, sometimes you got to work around it. But Keenan knows about this because he knows not, he, he knows uh, it's not a ninety nine percent success. Yeah. Keenan probably deals with this all the time with workman's compensation and people who have one thing or another, right? Keenan? Yeah, I get a lot of people that get injured on the job. And then uh, it's a lot of the companies that uh, approve or disapprove their dis their treatment. They always they always like to play games with injured workers. It's not fair to injured workers what, because how, they're getting denied treatment for, you know, injury on the job. Yeah, well, how, do, how, do, how is this the insurance companies that give them a bad time? Um, insurance companies also, and then the people that they hire to approve or disapprove of um, of treatments. Yeah, yeah. My sister it, does I mean, the same thing you do. Yeah, I mean, if we had universal health care, I'd be so happy. I don't care if I don't have a job. Just gotta, you know, everyone needs health insurance. If we had that's universal health care, I want. Yeah, if we had universal health care, you'd be out of a job. I don't care. I mean, I, it's. I think it's the right way to help people. You know, that's the way our our country should be is to do what we can to help people that's that's, that's the bottom that's line interesting because that's exactly what my sister says too and yeah, all the other thing, all the other westernized countries have it why yeah. don't we have it well, did you have, did waste did you have a lot of what what were you saying what were you going to say uh, was is there a lot of workers because i knew in ohio we had a lot of workers who got hooked on opioids being yeah. treated for their injuries but then workers' comp wouldn't help them get off the opioids. That was a yeah, problem they, for years. Yeah, that's that's a, a problem essentially everywhere. And then if uh, you know one side will blame the other side, the workers' comp you know treaters would blame the insurance companies, or they say it's not our problem. It wasn't a workers' comp issue, so they pass it back and forth. Right, and, and then puts them in the middle. We also had the first Honda plant in the United States. <laughs> If you filed for any kind of, they didn't believe in sick leave or anything like that. And if you filed for workers' comp, they would freeze the family out of any benefits for a long period of time, including your 401k money. Wow. They were terrible. Well, they didn't the, believe in it. The insurance companies don't want to pay, do they? Especially workers' comp, they hate paying because they get stuck for a lot of money, sometimes for a long time. And, they, and the employers also give them a hard time. Because the employers don't yeah. want to have to pay anything. It's all for profit. That's what it is. They process process claims. They get money for that. Yeah. And then the more money they save, the more money they make. Wow. There's people I, 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 in the I, Bay Area who 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 are get hooked on opioids because on workers' comp, and then they cut them off, and they're just like you know middle aged, uh, uh, you know high tech people, and they go out and buy heroin on the street and get and then die. Uh, John yeah. John Rockwell has his hand up. Yes, John. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't even sure I was going to go on, but I heard Kevin talking about the guy with, uh, with the throat third thing, and I was just at my local bar with another guy, a progressive bull bar palsy, right? Yeah. It's, the, it's, a very, it's a very rare version of ALS that only really affects the throat, the mouth, and all that. He is about a year into it, a year and a half into it, and he's still able to do a lot of things. He hasn't gotten to that point, but there will be a time when he's going to have to, they're going to have to intubate him, and, and then there's going to be time later that he's not going to be able to breathe, you know, because because that whole throat and mouth is just going to be frozen. It's a, it's freaky. Well, there's he has some, no idea some, how he got there's it. Something to be, probably, there's yeah. something to be said for being hit by a Mack truck. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, but he's doing a lot of traveling now with his wife and kid. You yeah. know, he's doing all the bucket list. He's been doing it for the last almost the last year now. After he got diagnosed, it took him forever to get diagnosed. Yeah. He was sounding because he was talking like he was drunk all the yeah. time, but he wasn't drunk. <laughs> yeah. Right. And finally, he got a doctor who, who knew what this was and said, yeah. "Oh, no, no, that's what you got to deal with." He also got his insurance company somehow to pay for him to be do a test of a japanese als drug uh the other ones they didn't want to do it because his condition is so rare we don't really care whether you get better we need to we're trying to find a cure for als the big you know that everybody gets if you're just a small variation a version on that and there are only a few people they're not really that interested in putting you on these tests. Let me ask, which I sort let, of understand, yeah. but it feels sort of crappy, isn't it? It's like, hey, yeah. hey, you know. Let, let me ask. Wanna. Let me ask Keenan something. Keenan, uh, in Thailand, since you're there and you, you know a bit about the culture, 
do they have medical plans for people there? I mean, do they have health in general? It's like universal health care for them. I think they, my wife, I mean, um, when she was here, she only paid like very little money per, uh, I think per year, actually. It wasn't very much, but they can go to the clinic and get taken care of. But the only problem is that a lot of the tourism hospitals here, yeah. they've um, taken away all the good doctors and take them to the tourism hospitals wow. here to work. By, by the way, we have But a they're slowly trying to build up slowly trying to build up their, their yeah. doctors back into the clinics. We've been joined by Tony, by the way, and that makes it a full house tonight. Oh, hey. Wow. Hey. Yeah. I heard you talking about ALS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My my uncle had passed away from that years ago. And you know what they, I was going to tell you this, you know what they thought it might have been, Alex? Well, they weren't sure. I was talking to his doctor, I never forget it, who was, who uh, tended for him. He thinks when they were in the army, rumor was that, uh, they think it could have been when they were testing them with certain things because the army picked up all his uh, health health bills at the end. That was like, I know they never had a conclusion. They think when they were getting vaccinated, the doctor told me that could have been of like uh, something that could have triggered it wow. when they were vaccinating them. Uh, uh, Ke no Keenan, uh, what, what's, uh, what's the weirdest claim you've ever had to deal with? Oh, I don't know. It's kind of. I don't really deal with the claims. I just oversee the oh, companies okay. that make decisions mm -hmm. for um, you know approve or deny oh, okay. deny claims. Yeah. So, but I'm trying to think for like Medi-Cal. When I did Medi-Cal, I had weird people just ask for gym memberships. You know, because of their dis disability, they want like lifetime gym memberships. So you know, something like that. Well, 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 you know, you, but, but, uh, were they entitled to lifetime gym memberships? No, not oh, really. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, my sister told me about one that wanted that had limo service for I don't know how long until they yeah. caught them. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid things like that. <laughs> yeah. I take the limo service until they caught them. Sure. It, as, as far as claims, I saw a big difference between Ohio and Michigan. Ohio, you could get permanent total, which means you could get benefits your entire life. Yeah. Michigan, yeah. everybody in Michigan wanted to settle. And the people would get a hundred thousand, maybe one hundred fifty thousand. The the money would run out in several years, and they, they then they'd have nothing. Nothing in it if you know compared to lifetime benefits, which is worth about a half million dollars. Mm -hmm. So they got off cheap in Michigan, and the attorneys well, went along with it. I, you know what I find really bizarre is that we can't come up with universal health care here, and yet Thailand, which we think of as a country full of rice patties. Can come up with it, yeah, right? You, you know, I mean, what 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 is the big uh, scientific? What do you, what are you showing us? <laughs> and they like to smoke, don't that's they? That's a beach in Thailand. Oh, well, that's a beach in Thailand. Okay. Live, live. Oh, there's all white people there. It looks nice. Yeah. Only... Man, you see Phil Look at this girl. <laughs> This is, you know something? It looks the, like the it. Republicans are going to try to. I'm going to make it harder to get Medicaid in Michigan, so they really? started. Well, I mean, what? I, I just don't understand. What is the rocket science that needs to be accomplished in this country to get universal health care? Other country, if Thailand has it. <laughs> It, by the I way, you, you know what's kind of interesting, though? A country that doesn't have universal health care, because most countries do, okay, in the civil well, world. Yeah. But yeah, you that know that who works. doesn't? And you would think they would? To... Wait a minute. Hold on a second. You know who, who doesn't have it and you would think would have it? It's China. Mm -hmm. They don't have it, uh, which, is, it, which is fascinating to me because aren't they a communist country? Isn't the heart? You would of, think that it would all be, yeah. Isn't the heart yeah, of that yeah. of that Alex, concept? You know what else they don't have? Yeah. They have well, number one. They have too many people, so they don't care. But number two, no, when the not. bird flu <laughs> when the bird flu broke out, they had very few epidemiologists that could track the the uh, the epidemic, and they were very far behind. That's why it got way out of control because they didn't care about epidemics. They just they couldn't lose a few hundred thousand people. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, that's how the bird flu got so bad and spread so quickly. Well, the bird flu, all the all all the flus start in, in Asia, and, oh, really? and work their yep. way over here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know why we don't just like. I don't know where they start. Did do, do you do you have any idea, Keenan or anybody? 
No. It's probably it's probably from like the oh, chickens goodness. and the farm animals and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of farm because, animals that are touched by the hands. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's um in my wife's village there's a lot of little chickens running around. There's you know buffalo and stuff walking around, and um it's you know it's not like a clean area either. I mean there's garbage everywhere in a lot of places. Mm. Actually, it started with the fifteen thousand dollar ostrich jacket. Ostrich jacket. That's where the the biggest bird in the in the world. Yeah, well, I mean, I just don't know why. Why, if we know where it starts from, we can't do something to prevent it from getting here. But somehow, every year, they know which flu's coming. They know which strains are coming, and uh, yeah, more or less, more more or less, yeah. Sometimes they miss it, but you know. But they know it's predictable, and it's they know there's a flu. Yeah, they know and it's, it's predictable from. where it comes from. So I think sure. they got it last year, Alex. The strain of it. What? We have a local, we have a local epidemic of the whooping cough right now. Really? Mm. Wow. Yeah, in Michigan. That. In Michigan. Wow. Huh. That's interesting. That's fantastic. It's fascinating. Um, <laughs> where, where, I mean, where did that come from? That's you know, highly contagious. It's very, and, very contagious. Oh, you bet. Am, yeah. I hear, am I hearing crickets? Or what is that I'm hearing? Uh, oh. Huh? Your lines Could are be being busy. tapped. That's like something outside, yeah. Oh, is that you, Steve, that I'm hearing crickets? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here, let me see if that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> They're synthetic crickets. I put them on to help me sleep. <laughs> oh, and that's what we were listening to, synthetic oh, okay. cricket? Oh, excuse me, I'm falling asleep now. Right. Yeah, because when I was stuck in New Mexico, we didn't. there was no such thing as a cricket, so I had to get this to soothe me. <laughs> Home addict. You know, one of those cheap things with the drugstore. <laughs> They're good, though. No, yes, they yes, Keenan. Um, my iPad might cut out, so I might cut out any minute. Okay. I'm down, I'm my back. Listen, I I'll really, stay on as long as I can. We, we really thank you for calling. Let me say that in advance. Uh, and okay. and you know, when you get back it's to San Francisco, great to have a new face. Yeah. yeah. We, when you get back, an, an old face. Person. When you when you get <laughs> an back, interesting person. When you get back to oh. San Francisco, you know, call us. Yeah. I will. So, I'll try calling later on this week too. Oh, great, great. Right. Yeah, but it, 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 it's it's terrific, and we really appreciate it. You know, I'm always amazed when we. I, I wish we had a big map here, and we could have put a pin in the map every time somebody calls from somewhere. <laughs> you know, uh, right. we got the Hawaiian. We got the you know. <laughs> yeah, we we uh, I, Renee I, calls I, from Hawaii, cool. and uh, we All used right. to have a guy call from I, Australia, but he hasn't called lately. You know. Mm. Uh, uh, we used to get a guy from uh, Czechoslovakia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Uh, so you know, if if you're anywhere in the world, folks, give us a call. You know, it, it's <laughs> it's always always nice. You know what it is? What I have? I don't know if you can see it in back of me. Hold on a second. Let me make my my picture just a little bit bigger here. San Francisco. Uh, no, what what it is is in the background. Uh, I have that's my and I love it. That's the Golden Gate Bridge it's on right now. This is Apple's uh, uh, Apple TV's screensavers, mm. and they're like okay. from all over the world, and they just created a new uh, a thing in it where if I if I hit the uh, first I have to hit the there we go. See, if I hit this, it says down there, crossing the Golden Gate Bridge towards the Presidio of San Francisco. Oh, right there, too. And then all of a sudden, the next one will be the uh, sand dunes in Dubai, and then another one will be, you know, it's all over the world, and, they, and they're gorgeous, and they're soothing. So I always just keep it on. You know, it's kind of like a high-def wallpaper. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, Alex, yeah. check out what my wallpaper is right now. What? Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, that's a picture I took a few weeks ago. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. It's, it's just coincidental that you have the same picture on your screen there. Yeah, the, well, it's coming from the other direction. Though. Oh, the other direction. Yeah, okay. it's going. Uh, it's going towards uh, the Presidio. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm at the Presidio there. Yeah. By the way, I that, you, Alex, that, it's such a nice city. I only went there once, but when I walked over the bridge. It's nice and oh, okay. peaceful. <laughs> well, yes, yes, uh, they say so uh, until those Google people moved in. Uh, <laughs> uh, but but 
uh, on that the one side of the bridge, it's very nice. The other side of the bridge, if you take a boat out there, it gets so choppy. Really? I, I went to I, 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 n I never threw up in a boat in my life. Oh, really? Oh, I'm seasick. Right? My friend took his boat out under the bridge and took us into, they, they call it this something patch. Uh, uh, and it, he took me us out there, and we're going, it's one of these kind of things, you know? And I, I, I was over the side yeah, blowing, I just blowing up. chunks, yeah. and... And I was I was puking up food I had eat, hadn't eaten yet. Oh. You know, it was my next meal was being thrown up. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I was it was amazing, and I don't usually get that seasick. Yes, Tom. You took your whole radio program out under the bridge. Did you I remember that? Did I? I? No, I don't remember that. Yeah, did a re yeah. Oh, yeah, they, we, we took we, a we had like. I was on that boat. We did we a show from a boat. You yeah. did the show from San Francisco, from a boat San Francisco Bay. We went under the Golden Gate Bridge, right into that choppy patch you're talking about. Yeah, but it it, it was it wasn't bad. Back. It wasn't bad if you're in a in a big boat like that. Yeah, we were in a little, a little boat. Little boat. Yeah, it's definitely gonna. Oh <laughs> man, I never hurled in my. I still remember <laughs> that. I hurled, and I and I'm pretty good at not hurling. You know, I don't throw up. And the reason I don't throw up is when I see puke, I want to throw up. So if I puke <laughs> and I see the puke, then I puke some more. And it's, it's never ending. So I, I, I don't want to throw up. Thank you very much. That's yeah, my comedy for the night, folks. Very rare. Yeah. yeah. Seinfeld, what, they went nine years without throwing up, right? George, and, George and, and Jerry? It was nine years of not throwing up. Is that what they said? Yeah, it was an episode, and then finally someone threw up. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, me, oh, my. As, as George Carlin would say, shouldn't you really throw out, not throw up? Because then you have to get up and move out of the way. E e e right. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, something like that. So, Like uh, he said about doctors, somewhere in the world there, there's the worst doctor in the world. One of them has to be the worst. <laughs> the bad thing is somebody has an appointment with him tomorrow morning. So, so we started out. We started out the show, Tom and I, talking about the fact that uh, that uh, uh, you know things are terrible. Uh, but then I said they've always been terrible. I mean, there's always been some kind of thing where I've had a reason to be ashamed of this country. <laughs> you know, I, I, the, uh, it, we came out of war. The only time, as I said, but we were, I mean, you, uh, I've, I've been watching again this documentary on the Roosevelt's by Ken Burns. And you think, oh, you know, they had great presidents back then, like Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt was a fucking imperialist. He thought the only <laughs> time that America really found its calling is when it went to war. And he was always looking for one. And so you say, things are so horrible now. They weren't that great under Teddy Roosevelt, you know, because he was or, he was in Spain. He was or, in uh, uh, Mexi uh, was, uh, Mexico, Mexico, uh, Puerto Rico. Or well, he went to Cuba. Uh, he went Cuba. to Cuba with his own troops. That he yeah. this was before he was president. His he rough riders. War. His rough rough riders, and some of them yeah. even got killed because he was just so into let's go charge San Juan Hill. You know, and they go, hey, you nuts, we're going to get killed. Yeah, uh, and um, Franklin was uh, who to Teddy was some uh, I, forget, I always forget the relation. Second cousin. I no, think. Of, of, yeah, what something do you mean, like. What do you mean yeah, to to yeah. to, uh, to to Franklin? Yeah, he was he was the yeah. fifth cousin of Franklin Roosevelt. Oh, okay. I think but we've was, always yeah. been a very imperialist country. Or was it I mean, Eleanor? No, wait a minute. Excuse me. It was. It, I think Native it was. Americans. He was like his second cousin. And then we went south and killed yeah. Mexicans. I think. And then, he, and then we went yeah. south of the border and killed no, people in I, Central America. I think he was a second cousin to Roosevelt. Eleanor was a fifth cousin to Franklin mm -hmm. Roosevelt. Right, I was going to say. Oh. Yeah. He oh, married, yeah. He married yeah, a, family. a cousin All and the family. didn't wind up having a retard. You know, I mean, it was okay. It, really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, all, all of the whole Franklin family um, uh, married within each other. Now, they were maybe like, like you know, cousins five times removed. 
but they, they, they felt that they felt more comfortable with each other than they felt with the rest of the world. And so the Franklin and the Roosevelts in general uh, were like intermingling, let's say. Mm -hmm. They were really to themselves. So, you know, who knows what. But anyway, so when you look at, at other times, we've had some stuff that was kind of, you know, mm. not, not too pretty. Not too pretty. And, and look, the Korean War was a big mistake on our part. Vietnam War was a horrible mistake. I mean, we're talking about all these periods of time, and then you're saying today is so horrible? We got, a, we got an absolute megalomaniac for a president, but, you know, I don't think it's reached the level, for instance, let's say, of uh, discord in this country that the Vietnam War produced. Yeah, that's true. Or well, like a World War One. Oh my God, it was like horrible. Yeah, but we didn't participate yeah. much in that. We were only in that for about the last year and a half. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. First, Tom, yeah. Then John. Tom. Yeah, I, I have to say, Trump, without a doubt, is the worst president of my lifetime, and he th he to to think that he is even more corrupt than Richard Nixon. <laughs> I know he's a crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, you know something. I, I was saying the other night that I that I, I said to myself, you know, really, George Bush Jr. Uh, doesn't look so bad to me now. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, know, as a matter of fact, Reagan doesn't look so bad to me now. As a matter I of know. fact, Nixon really? doesn't look so bad to me now. As a matter of fact, Hitler doesn't look so bad to me <laughs> now. Well, let's go. Well, I don't know about yeah, that, but yeah. yeah. But, yeah. What were you going to say? Don't, hey, don't forget about the Bushes. We, the Bushes killed hundreds of thousands in Iraq. Yeah. Yeah, George W. Bush got us into a terrible war. Yes. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. wait a minute. John's got his Still hand up. John's had his hand up. Well, one of my, one of my Facebook friends, one of the few that's really conspiracy right-winger sort of person where this whole thing about the Russians are, the Russians came in and, and tried to affect the uh, 16 election. She's like, well, think of the, the 40, 50, 80 times that America tried to influence other elections. I said, well, does that make, does that make this wrong or right? I mean, like, you know, mm -hmm. so, so we did it too. What does that mean? I mean, she's like, she somehow makes says, well, hey, the Russians did because we all do it. That's not a good excuse. No. <laughs> we are, when they yeah. up in the sixties, we were afraid all the time of eventually being under a communist flag. Oh, we and yes. now we're we subverted there. all and these guys and, and, the, and brought them out. The problem now is we have a terrible amount of power amassed in non-humans in the form of corporations mm -hmm. that are self uh, they're self propelling and out of control, and they've amassed so much power. That's why it's worse now. I think. Um, the Koch brothers and there's people are so rich and so powerful yeah, that well, what, uh, we what, have a uh, big gap. What are you What are you gap. doing to make sure you don't add to the wealth of the Koch brothers? It's hard to figure out how well, not to. Well, uh, uh, everything you do, has, everything is, you so do, you almost you have a mattress uh, or uh, you almost, drive a car. It's almost all almost Coke everything money. you touch during a given day. Has right. Coke written all over it. It, and, it? And Trump wants to give him another tax break, and not even without passing a law. Yeah, but he, he also he, he also has been putting them down too, like crazy. Yeah, but I think that's that that's just pitter patter. I think. Yeah. Yes, Tom. I think what's really serious right now is the fact that that we have a, a cult of Trump, and when we listen to our friends who. Uh, try to justify everything that, that Trump does. It just it just shows that, that, that these cultists, you can't convince them of, of, of anything that, that uh, you know, as we said earlier, you know, Trump says, I, you know, don't believe anything you, you hear from anybody else, believe only me. And he's got enough of these people that are in this cult, and he's dragged the whole Republican Party in with it. And that's that's what's really bothering me right now. And, and it's supercharged by the Russians who are getting in there and are very adept at psycho stuff, including including this QAnon phenomenon, right. which is just another conspiracy theory uh, black hole 
that makes nothing. It's destroying truth as we know it, which is a 1984. Okay, well, right. I'm, I'm I'm not getting bored. You know, <laughs> it, it, it 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 it's just it just it's just starting to bore me. Uh, 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 you know, I mean, uh, 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 so so the Russians are hacking us. Let's hack back. I, you know, why why well, do we why do we just sit here and go? Oh, they're out to get us. It's it's it's. Uh, well, you know why? Because you know, because Zuckerberg makes money off the Russians, and Trump didn't have a had a thirty minute meeting, eighteen months after he uh, the whole thing started, and now nothing's come of it. Uh, uh, There's nobody uh, leading yeah. the charge. John Rockwell. Somebody needs to Charge. John Rockwell has his hand up. John? No, I don't know if, since I didn't get in on the beginning, uh, did anybody mention the Washington Post story today uh, totaling up all Trump's lies, like 4,229 lies in the first 500 and something days? And these are all these are all lies that are provable as lies, you know, not just him talking. Right. He's actually sending this absolutely false. Somebody said over, I, uh, that I was seeing... Over 4,000. Yeah. No, somebody that I saw on, I don't know, one of these networks was saying, no, he didn't lie. Uh, he just extends the truth. You know, it's the truth is he sees it. You know, the little yeah, lies extends it a little too the, far. The, all the, the time. Be, best lie this week yeah. was is that our uh, our GDP is the best it's been in 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 the last fifty years or something like that. Yeah. It's it exceeded where it is right now four times under Obama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and remember this number's coming from Obama, from Trump's administration, and he has monitors in each agency. I know they're they're they're. Adjusting the numbers. It's very easy to do. I used to do it myself for Social Security. Very easy. But a few little changes in protocol and you can make the numbers yeah. different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does any of this bother you? Hold, hold, hold on a second. Is any of the, Keenan, does any of this bother you or are you just glad you're in Thailand right now? I think I'm glad in Thailand. I can't stand that orangutan. <laughs> 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 yeah. Orangutan, yeah. Uh, orangutan. Yeah, no, you, it, it, but it, you know, I, you know, ever since he became president, the news cycle every day is about Obama. I mean, Obama, about uh, Trump. It's Trump. Well, he's Trump, controlling Trump. it. That's why he puts out the tweet early in the morning. And even if he's obstructing justice, he controls the the conversation. You're absolutely right. Yeah, and and and. Uh, you know, if it isn't about him, he, he and he also he. You know, the press. You you talked about the press and that we didn't like the idea of them being called uh, fake news, which I think is horrible because it, nobody mm -hmm. news is not fake, but news can yeah, be. Yeah, there's no such thing. It, it, news can be slanted. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, but but when we call him out for lies, we have yeah, the no, documentation. No, 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 when he calls out fake news, he has nothing. No, 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 nothing to back him up. Light, nothing. lighten up. Uh, it, what I'm saying is is that he is um, um, he he is trying to do everything he can to change the subject every day, to keep it away from Russia, and from that mm -hmm. whole investigation. And then whenever he does have something to say about it, it's calling, why, why can't we bring this thing to an end? Telling Sessions, you've got to bring the whole thing to an end. Uh, why is Mueller taking so long? Hey, it took, like, what, three years for them to get the goods on, uh, on Clinton so they could impeach him? Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember that, Tom? How, long, how, 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 how many years was that? Yeah, they, they started. They start, how long was, how long was Benghazi and they didn't indict anybody? Yeah, they right. started by investigating right. Clinton a year into his as president. But he keeps trying to trying to it's take the conversation, he tr it, take, it, take it away from where it should be, uh, and the press goes right along with him because you turn the TV on the first thing in the morning and they're all dancing his tune. Yes, Jeff. Well, can someone, Jeff, yeah, I cannot. I can uh, believe that 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 Mueller uh, is all every day. Trump is against him, How, trying to get him fired or yes, leaving. But that in and of itself is obstruction of justice. Yeah. Hey, hey, I, got a, I got a conspiracy theory for you, Alex. Yeah, here, here we go. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> this is to throw out there just to consider not that it's true, but why would Trump, now they know, that, all, all right, 
uh, Spicy already said that his tweets are official government documents. Why would he continue to tweet which exactly which is obstruction of justice unless Putin is putting so much pressure on him and Putin has so much dirt on him that he that who, well, who would benefit if he gets impeached right away or indicted? Putin. Could it just Putin be is the one that would benefit? Could it just so I think be, he's could having it, him incriminate could, himself could it just be and that, pushing stuff quicker. Could it just be that uh, Putin? Uh, hasn't put isn't putting pressure on at all. That he's just a fucking moron. Is that but always a possible. possibility? It's possible. It doesn't matter if Putin has anything because if Trump thinks he does, but he just certainly has the money. He has the money. Uh, the, the money right yeah, All right. He, he has. He, the money you're saying he has the PP pictures. Okay. Yes, Tom. You had <laughs> no, your no, no, not that. I don't mean that. I mean about his financial dealing. Uh, <laughs> Tom. Yeah. I, I wasn't going to use the word moron, but uh, it, it, he is very impulsive. And so I think that, that unfortunately, we, we read too much into what he's doing as far as his diversion. His mind is diverted. I mean, but he, but he's, I, he's a master manipulator, though. He's, he's, he's a showman, and he knows how to use um, I, I repetition and all the Hitler. L- listen, uh, let me just cool. jump in here for a Give second. Too much I'll, credit for, for, yeah. for, for his... His own imagination, because because he just lashes out impulsively. I just, he just I, irate, yeah. and he lashes out yeah. much of the time on Twitter. I I, uh, I want to say this because uh, uh, we have a lot of people listening right now. I, I don't know why, but a lot of people are watching. And if you're watching, uh, there's a subscribe button up at the top of the page. Uh, you might want to you know click what? on that and just subscribe so you can be a subscriber to this to this cast, as it were, and the, the more that I get, the better it gets. And uh, please uh, do it. Uh, tell your friends to do it too. Yes, Tom. And if you subscribe, you can you can uh, you get a lovely you tote bag. Noti- your notification. So when Alex comes on the air, you get an email say, "Oh, Alex is on the air," and then you can go on and you won't miss a, a, a moment. Yeah, you can be annoyed by me. In other words, uh, and Alex you know. might come to your house and broadcast. Yeah, and and if you subscribe right now, there's a lovely tote bag in it for you. So. <laughs> Remember how they used to like at uh, KQED in San Francisco? They always used to during their pledge season. And you'll get a lovely tote bag. Like, I want one of those fucking tote bags. Always the tote bags. Always with the tote bags. I I, I want want an official set of of Trump rally steak knives. That's what I want. Yeah. Uh, Yes, uh, uh, John. Well, I was going to say for, you know, I mean, the New York City version of a lovely tote bag is a Whole Foods uh, bag, you know? A, a Whole Foods bag? Oh, a Whole yeah. Foods, yeah, right, a Whole Foods uh, shopping bag, yeah. I hear, That's their about food, what you I hear their food has gotten pretty cheap at Whole Foods now that they're owned by Amazon. Some of it is, yeah. You have to look around, but you can get some good stuff there. Yeah. I'm waiting for my my nephews didn't get me a birthday present. We said, it's coming, it's coming. Well, now it's like two months later, and I haven't seen it. I Last time they got me a Whole Foods gift card for about... 50 or 60 bucks. That was great. I was able to pick up a few things I would normally not do. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on. I hope they're going to get around to hopping I, I wouldn't mind them paying my next two months rent, but I don't think they're going to do that. <laughs> oh, there you go. Look at that. KQED. Oh, oh wait a minute. Yeah, I yeah, like say, hold, bag, hold on right? a second. What did you What did you send us here, Ray? A picture? Let me see. Yeah, a tote show, bag. Show the a eye. KQED and, tote bag. Well, there's a tote bag. Well, there's a picture of me. Tom's got a hat. Uh, well, yeah, but where where's the uh, where's the oh on the oh, side there we go the uh, there, discussion. I go all the way. there it is. There's the KQED tote. Well, I have to get rid of my picture here. <laughs> Hold on a second, <laughs> so that people can see it. Uh, let me see here. How do I get rid of me? Here's how we do it. There we go. There we go. That and is. If you the, don't want a tote bag, Alex will record your greeting on your home answering machine. That is the KQED <laughs> hey. tote bag, ladies and gentlemen. Just so you. Uh, <laughs> just so you, you know, can know that it's it's, it's exciting uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let me see here. Let me get rid of how do I, how do I get rid of this now? There we go. There we go. Okay. Because I got to get the uh, uh, we got a picture. See, we can also take chat too, folks. We, this is just really sophisticated. Our wonderful, <laughs> yeah. our wonderful <laughs> outfit here. Anyway. Um, are you, is that that TV station that produces communist yes. shows? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 
I one time, one time I, today. One time I decided that the KQED was spending money badly, they and their programming was having problems, and that I was going to run for the board of directors of KQED. Mm -hmm. So I attempted to run, and I found out that's a whole big fix. There's just no fucking way you're going to win if you're an outsider, you know. Mm -hmm. And it just gets loaded on their on the, on their end. It, it's it's amazing. It is just amazing. Yes, uh, uh, Tom. Well, actually, and since then they've actually eliminated uh, the opportunity for members to vote for the board of directors, they're all appointed now. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. But I'm not going to trash. I'm not going to trash KQED because oh, my brother's wife works for for them, oh. and she gave me this hat. <laughs> so I've I've been sufficiently bribed. You've been bribed. Yeah. You didn't get a fucking tote bag. No a hat. A hat. Make uh -huh. KQED great again. Oh, no, it's a, yeah. <laughs> you know, I figured out today, do you notice how much, you know, you see Trump wearing the hat, right? And you're thinking, like, you know, what president do you have that goes around wearing a suit and wearing a hat? And it hit me. You know why he wears the hat? Because he didn't he have time. Them. No, he no. didn't have time to do his hair that day. And they it probably, up his hair. That's right. No, yeah. it probably takes an hour to get it done. So when he's going off to the airplane, he simply throws the hat on. You don't see the uh, whatever that super rat's comb over, the swirl over. And then he gets on the plane where he's got his hairdresser, who then spends the next five hours with winches and everything getting that hair in shape. <laughs> five gallons of hairspray. This may be his hair. Don't forget that spray tan. Yeah, <laughs> the spray tan. This may be the orange. This actually may be the biggest canard. Cheeto in a can. This may be the biggest presidential canard since Franklin Roosevelt hiding the fact that he was a cripple. Mm -hmm. yeah. You think he's got a toupee, Alex? Is, is it possible no. that if you take Propecia for years, it'll affect your mental capacity? We well, see, if he were, if he, if he wanted to be decent, he would just shave his hair short, all right, and have a nice big bald pate. But he can't. You know why? Because he had a scalp reduction, and there's a big scar up there. What is that? He has a. What's a scalp reduction? It, you, they take your ha head and they run a. Cut a flap, and then they pull the head hair head together, so the hair that you do have moves closer. Oh, mm -hmm. he had a fucking lobotomy. They took his brain parts out. <laughs> in the middle of that's, it all. That's yeah. assuming he had them to begin with. Yeah, yeah well, they, they put lamb in there or something. But you know, I mean, uh, if you know, if, if I were him and I could do it, I would just shave the hair and say, "Hey, look, I'm bald. Okay, big deal. I'm your president." and uh, the, but that haircut looks so undignified. It's just. Do you, do you think Melania ever spends any time with him at all alone? Uh, I think uh, she. Her eyes always look like she's trying to find the closest exit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> looks like you know, he's like in a cotton candy machine at the circus. What? And, uh, you know, and yeah, really, and you know, and he seems so. He really seems android. Like he seems so unhuman. I swear to God, I did. You, it it just doesn't seem like he likes animals. It doesn't seem like he likes music. Well, you know something. He like anything. He doesn't reading. Where was it? Last the other day, I saw. I think it was last night or something. There was something on, and it was Obama. It was all about Obama, and I just said. God, you know, when he was in office, okay, not the greatest president we ever had. He, he was not terrific. But on the other hand, he, he, that uh, the White House looked <laughs> lovely. They looked lovely in it. There was, there, a, there, there was a respect. There was a respect for the job, you know? And he, he so occupied that White House with dignity that I just wish we had a little of that back. It, and he did yeah. at the same time... He did that at the same time he was a black person. That's not an easy thing to do. That's country. right. That's right. And the reason he didn't get the respect and, and do he, the right thing. And he would have gotten more done if he had been white. And not because be, being black made him in that. Well, at least quicker. But yeah. because he, they wouldn't have been fighting him as much. You know, but they fought him because he was a black guy. 
Right, uh, absolutely. And, and, the, and, the, and the believe McConnell's going to get everything he wants now when he did nothing for eight years. Nothing. Well, you know, the thing, the thing is that when, you know, Obama, I think, had, I remember years ago when I was at uh, WPLJ here in New York, and we got our first female engineer, board op, okay? And uh, everybody was like, you know, behind her back, oh, well, look, we got a woman, look, yeah, well, yeah. She, is she, do you think she's hot? You know, and all that. I mean, and she was getting, she, she had, I had to say, the roughest job I've ever seen anybody have to be, have. She, being the first woman in a profession was not easy. And I think the same could be said of being the first black president. You know, f for all that we felt good about, America has finally done away with, with race and with our color barrier. He was treated like fucking shit. By the way, we have one of the highest numbers of people watching at one time on the video tonight that we've ever had yeah. here. Hmm. Son of a gun. Gee, you have anything that measures the passion level or the IQ of each participant? Uh, well, they're all very smart because they're listening to me. It's like double like the yours. normal. Huh? It's double the normal number. No, it's not double, but it's... it's oh. it's. Uh, Isn't it usually around it's 20%? About, it's about 25% higher than it usually oh, okay, is. Cool. At any given time, at the end of the night, there are more people that watched it total, but nobody sits uh. here and watches this whole thing for two hours. Do you think so? I did today. I watched one of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I was driving. I watched. I was listening. But because you wanted to watch yourself walking your dog. No, that was horrible. <laughs> I actually had to stop it when that happened. Really? <laughs> yeah, I just can't. Couldn't stand it. Yeah. I was like Jesus, I, this is awful. Anything you want to jump in and say, Keenan? By the way, I just. Uh... No, not really. I just kind of. I kind of compared Trump to ISIS, right? There's, he's tearing down history like ISIS is about. In other countries, turn down history, and that's what he's doing, basically. He's rejecting history, you're saying? He's tearing down history. Tearing down history, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the thing that made me maddest about ISIS wasn't the fact that they were throwing people off buildings and killing people and so on. Oops, we just lost them and and lose and uh, people, uh, but that uh, ISIS was destroying just you know historical uh, places. Because mm -hmm. they just wanted to uh, uh, do away with that, and I just I found that just horrible. They, they would, you know. Uh, but thanks, Keenan. By the way, if you're still listening somewhere out there, we in really enjoyed having him here, Thailand yeah. tonight. Oh, there, there we go, bald Trump. <laughs> now you see, <laughs> that would not be a bad look because he he almost he looks like Mussolini, doesn't he? <laughs> You got to put him that. in the Doctor Evil outfit, you know. And, no, but he and he, have uh, Don Junior as Mini Me. <laughs> but he look he look he looks well to me. He's always looked like Mussolini. I mean, in the, in the gestures and so on. But I call him El du I call him El Duche. Yeah, El El El, El, El Duche. El Duche. Yeah, yeah El Duche. You know, you know who we should blame though, really, is. The Republicans that are letting him get away with all this and not keep him in line at least a little bit, and also Pence, because Pence was supposed to be the guy experienced in government. He was going to show him the way to do things right, and he yeah. he's not anywhere except waiting to take over when Trump's gone. Well, let me, let me ask you this: I we, I talked about this last night, and this is a whole almost a whole different group of people from last night. I'd like to see your opinion on it. Is the whole Facebook deal? where Facebook came out and said that they were getting rid of 31 of their accounts because, or uh, th yeah, 31 of their accounts because they think that they were trying to fudge with the election and so on. 31 out of how many? Uh, many, and, many thousands. And I got the sinking feeling. Oh, here comes Patrick at the last minute. Uh, uh, hello, Patrick. I, I, got, I, I got the sinking feeling what is that noise? Is that you again, Steve? Yeah, I'm opening some microwave popcorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is it you're you're the noisiest person that calls this program? Sorry. Well, just put yourself on put you mute. mute. But you know what it is. I'm used to using the old phone, and these phones they're more sensitive. They hear more things. You yeah, know? yeah. So. 
Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. A- 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 anyway, uh, uh, where was I? Oh, the, anyway, you had Facebook suddenly coming out with this, and I'm thinking to myself, none of these pundits on television are questioning whether maybe Facebook is just fudging the facts to make themselves look good so the stock price will go back up. You know, the, why did they choose the, this week, the week after Dresden for their stocks? Why did they choose this week to come out with that? And, and do you guys think there's something a little fishy there? I think you're right, Alex. And, and also they proved that they came out, the examples they gave were very mild examples. I don't think they want us to know how bad it really is or how much money they're making off of the the uh, in Confederate Ill- illegitimate sites. I don't think they want I think <laughs> I don't they're think. making big bucks. They're making they could spend a lot more money controlling this stuff. I don't think they want us to know uh it, 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 look 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 at the picture that Ray put up. I don't think they want us to know how how many people they've been losing too. Uh just like Twitter. Right. Twitter dumped maybe 25% of all the people who tweet. Uh, they found they were fake accounts. I know because I, I had 45,000 45, uh, 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 tweet uh, people, and now I'm down to 9,000. And 9, half of those 000. people had Wells Fargo fake, Wells Fargo fake accounts, too. Yeah. There's a lot of fake accounts around, I'll yeah, tell you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so anyway, hello, Patrick. Hello. Uh. Boy, you, you just kind of called at the last minute tonight. Well, you had a full host on, and uh, I was watching. Yeah. Listen, and then uh, figured I'd drop in just so you don't think I'm ignoring you. Uh, no, no, I don't ever feel you're ignoring us. You know, some nights you're on, and some nights you're not on. And when you're on, I appreciate it. And uh, when you're not on, I think you're a motherfucker. So, anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But um, uh, you know, I just, I just don't know. I it, 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 the whole discussion of Trump has gotten me to a point of exhaustion. You know, where it's just like, why? Just stop. Go away. I'm counting the days till the next election, and I, I just hope and pray that he doesn't get reelected. Well, just think what's going to happen 60 days before the midterms. He says he's going to start pounding everybody at the midterms. Oh boy! Yeah, he he says already. Yeah. He says just wait sixty days before I'm going to start pounding everybody. Patrick, by the way, now the number is even higher than it was when I said it was high. It's incredible. Yes, uh, uh, pa- 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 uh, Patrick, have his hand up first, or Jeff? Yeah. Um, why is it so easy for me to ignore and ignore the television when I see so many of my friends on Facebook losing their mind and? Every, you know, I mean, this whole Trump thing, I just move on with my life. Yeah, we're bored. It doesn't affect, <laughs> it doesn't affect every fiber of my being like it does for so many. I mean, I, I didn't let Obama do it. I didn't let anybody do it. It, it, it is what it is. I, I voted. I did what I could. And now wait for the midterm. Wait, you know, I mean... I don't understand why people are allowing their life to be run by the news cycle, by every tweet that he puts out. Everybody just devours like it's their last. And and, and and the news people eat it up like crazy, and then sit there <laughs> rambling about it, and then wondering, you know. And then he keeps insulting them, and they keep it. It's like they're um, uh, like a wife who gets beaten by her husband, but still loves him. You know, it's a dysfunctional relationship between the press and Donald Trump. And he's playing on that dysfunction. We're getting all these pictures of (laughs) El Duche um, being thrown at us by Ray. Oh, boy. Yes, Jeff. I, I think a better explanation is Trump is the pimp. Jeff. And they're all the workers, and that's the only game in town. Jeff. Uh, turn on your turn on your mic, Jeff. There you go. Okay. Well, that's why I try to keep the place a little quiet. But uh, I really hope, hope, hope that he has a big, big heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, well, you know, I'll tell you, it, you know, there was once a theory 
that if you took if everybody if you took a guy and you put him in the middle of a football stadium and had everybody in the football stadium concentrate on wishing him dead that it would kill him <laughs> so maybe we should have a day we should have a day where we encourage everybody for like about two minutes to concentrate on wishing Donald Trump would drop dead now we're not going to hurt him we're not going to do anything else but use our wills to try and create a heart attack, brain hemorrhage, whatever, you know. Uh, I, I, if, we, if we collect enough money, I know Putin has a guy. Okay. <laughs> well. Hey, Alex, Wait a minute. Ray had his hand up, Ray. It, it, that would be like praying, right? We could be, like be sort of pray. praying for him to die. Y yeah. But, but, but you know what, Patrick? I think, to answer your question, I think... I think he scares the shit out of people. Like, uh, even his followers. So his followers blindly make excuses for everything he does just because maybe they think they'll keep them safe. And the rest of us obsess about it sometimes because he scares the shit out of us. Yeah. I mean, you don't know what the f you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it's like you you feel so insecure. Well, let, let me in say this, this. Let me say this. I said a couple of months ago. Not everyone does. That you don't. I'm not worried about so. Trump because nobody. In, it, it can ruin this country. It, it, it's kind of ruin proof. But I'm taking that back. Uh, I honestly think that he's proving me wrong. Yeah. And I think the problem here is not so much that he's making permanent damage, but he's, he's renovating the property. And the property can never be brought back to where it was. You get what I'm saying? In yes. other words, he's doing you things which, which, which are bad for our democracy and for America. And that once he's gone, yes, things can be made nicer. The next president can make the life a little bit better for all of us. But the damage that he did, we have to live with. You know? And it's more like a renovation. You know, like when they renovate hey, an hey, apartment. Hey in this apartment house and do away with all the wood and throw all the good wood out. Yes, it's Tom like has Walmart his, did Tom has his hand up. Tom? Do all the tacky gold plating on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, thing. Alex. Yeah, Tom, well, Tom, Tom has his hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, we don't have much less t uh, time left in the, in the program, but I really wanted to answer uh, Patrick's, uh, you know, statement. And also do a plug for for something that I'm I'm actually getting involved in. One thing is 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 you know I keep I do write a blog, and uh, my I, I express my latest blog entry. If you want to go to tomyamaguchi dot dot blog, and I don't freak out. I just get active, and that's what I'm arguing for. Is you know we, we've got to get active. We can't just be passive. We can't just let, like like burn out. We have to get involved, which leads me to my plug of something I'm going to be doing on September 8th, mm -hmm. which is a Saturday before the big climate conference that's happening. Jerry Brown's going to be putting a climate conference on in, in San Francisco on the following week, but on September 8th, we're going to be gathering in San Francisco. We're going to have the biggest climate rally on the West Coast in history. I'm inviting everybody on the panel, everybody listening, to go on to Align, which is uh, ca.riseforclimate.org, RSVP, get involved, just don't sit around and, 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 and complain. And you can go, you can go, and you can go. California is burning right now, and Trump is playing golf. Trump is golfing. California's burning. We've got to remember that. Yes. Thank you very much, Tom. That's Tom Yamaguchi dot blog. Yes. Okay. Hey, listen, thanks to, thanks to Tim. Thanks to Steve. Thanks to Ray Renati. Thanks also to John Rockwell and Patrick Blazik and Tony Magno. I'm going to run out of breath with all the people that are here tonight. Kevin, thank you. Jeff, thank you. I think I thank you, Tom. And also thank you to Keenan from calling us from Thailand. Hope he calls us again. Hope you all call us again. It's been wonderful having you here. And and, uh, and if you just wave goodbye, uh, everybody will probably wave back at home. There they go, the Citizens Panel, ladies and gentlemen, for tonight. Uh, and I have to now hang up on them and uh, say goodbye to them. There we go, offline. And I think we're taken care of, right? Okay, that's it. Anyway... 
uh, uh, that's our that's our little uh, gathering for tonight. Uh, next is uh, uh, Jack Bishop. Uh, he does a thing called uh, the intersection, and then at at one o'clock this morning, Eastern Daylight Time, it's Connections. And then tomorrow night at 9.30, yes, it's Damian Chaplin once again with The Exchange. And tomorrow night I do it all over again at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody.